The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technician's Hour, and it's my pleasure to be here Friday, August the 24th. Ah, wow. August is almost gone. So, this is very interesting. We've got the Dow up 37, but it held a very important support level. We'll talk about that right now. We're going to go to the, the numbers. First, I'll say thank you to all of the folks that did the uh, first couple of hours. You've got Steve Rhodes and Steve and Tom, and Steve was, uh, and Tom were joined by uh, Daryl Martin. Great shows. Thank you very much. Oh, and before I forget, I don't want to forget this, I uh, mentioned uh, Ilka and uh, one of our favorite tigers or tigresses and uh, white lights there. Just uh, we hope everything works out fine. So let's go to the numbers. We've got the Dow up for you. Maybe I'll do it because it's Friday and I want to get to as much detail as I can in a short space of time that I have. 13,330 was, uh, 13, was a high on the 21st of August. Missed by eight points, nine points, let's call it, making a new recovery high from the May 1st. 13,338 level in the Dow. So what does that mean? It means that looking at the various charts, if you've got the daily chart, the tacticals over the past three days, including the low today, uh, pull back really sharply in terms of the MACD crossing negative, the stochastic went from up in the 93% area, just zipped right down to 57% where it's at right now. What does that mean? It means that when I look, I have a couple of ways of looking at this in the daily chart. The daily chart says that there's been a beautiful up channel. Now, the way everyone draws up channels, there could be slight deviations. I like to go to the outer parts of the candle, the wick, and occasionally it will um, overlap into the body. But mostly I like to go to the most hit line, uptrend or downtrend line. They can make a parallel move to the upside if it's an up channel, to resistance levels, rising resistance levels, so that you're getting higher highs and higher lows, to make two parallel lines. Within that, there's a technique that I developed, which is called the inside track. And you draw, if you're looking at Tiger TV, it should be green. I don't know why it's changed color there. Overnight, someone <laughs> must have changed color. The green line says that if it breaks above it, that's very good because it's out of that uh, repellent area, and that would imply that any move in the Dow, that going to the 13,330 level of the other day, well, if the Dow went to 13,450, it would have broken up to the upside. Now, what's very important is that the inside track resistance level that's been the latest uh, set of uh, – rising resistance lines, took you right to that level of 13,330. It was actually 13,326-ish. It went a little bit above that and closed sharply lower. Now what we've got, and let me make those lines a little clearer, that if you're looking at Tiger TV, this is the daily chart that we're looking at. I'm sure some of you are now getting really used to seeing this particular technique. I'm taking away the plus sign. I have no choice because of the way the MACD is pulled back. I'm taking away the plus sign, and I'm putting in a down arrow. That doesn't mean to say that it can't go and make a new recovery high, but that's the technique I use. And what is the technique? It says that when you've made a peak, D, E, or F, and the stochastic pulls back sharply under 80%, and the MACD, the moving average, the fast, the yellow line, the fast moving average, crosses the slow moving average, the red one, and there's a wide beta. Be careful because that says you're now in a sell signal to sell mode, but that's just the daily. We have to wait for Friday, five, uh, 4 o'clock, that's today, 4 o'clock, to decipher what is going on in the weekly chart because you've got to wait for the close. Anything can happen between now and the close. Now look at this. The green line, so the red line was the, 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 the barrier, and now the green line is the support line. Well, it held the support line this morning. It's now above it. 13,152 is the nine-period exponential moving average resistance. And we want to see what's going on. Now, I, I, I had these questions while I've been away, but I've also managed to do my uh, daily news data every single day, plus, um, plus Wednesday, and I've done today, Friday. So I'm still uh, a working vacation, just having a great time, but uh, still working quite hard. Now, this is really important as far as I'm concerned. 
the red line is where it starts to break down. Now, I've got this based on the black background. I have a slightly different one on my white background chart that I show uh, subscribers every single morning. And I've been asked, what, 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 what exactly is your position? Well, my position right now is that on Wednesday, so yesterday was Thursday, yeah, on Wednesday, um, we went short via the SPY, and um, so far it's worked out really well, but I've raised the stop to a, a little above break even. I, I'm just saying to myself, these stock index ETFs are getting whipped up and down and up and down in very big moves. You can even see on the chart, yes, it's gone to PD twice. But each time it was really whippy, especially the part that went to E and F and then came down. So I, I've preferred to go with my uh, Chapman Wave methodology to be able to, de to de determine the greater tide. And the greater tide, as far as I'm concerned, in some of the stocks, we now have five uh, short positions. And it's a little unusual to have this many positions. I don't like having these positions. I think one of them is at least one of them is going to be taken out today. And we have two longs, and those are working. Uh, one we just got this morning is working beautifully so far. Days young, who knows by the end of the day. But it is working, and that says to me, you've got to look at this as a split personality market. You've got to say to yourself, hey, this stock is holding really well. There are some NASDAQ stocks that are actually holding pretty darn well. So, therefore, don't be afraid to look at them as longs, and you just tighten up the stop, and that's the way it is. You get taken out, you're taken out. But whenever money comes back in, those are the ones that are going to find some support to the upside. I'll just quickly grab Apple. A, I'll grab an apple right here, and I've got this. Is it a red apple or a green apple? It is a green apple. And I made a peak D at 674.88. That was the high of uh, the 21st of, of August. It pulled back. Where did it pull back to? It just almost touched the white line, the nine-period exponential moving average. But what I've been mentioning for a little while now is that the MACD, the moving average convergence divergence, is still rallying. And to me, that is a good sign. And the stochastic has not gone under 80%. It's at 84%. That says there's internal buying. Now, where would you expect the greatest support to be a really key measure will be 644. You remember the round number, 644, the high of October, of April the 10th? Well, pulled back really sharply to 522.16, ran up, and now it's going to higher high. Broke, the moment it breaks above 644, you've got to say, okay, be careful, this can go higher. It has gone higher. It has gone to 674.88. Now, what's very important about this is that Apple is helping the queues. So let's do the numbers. The S&P now is up 3.18 at 14.05. I'll get to that, but since we're talking about Apple, let me go to the queues. QQQ Trust Series 1 has exactly the same chart as Apple. It went to a peak E at 68.88. It's walking the night, not exactly, but very close in this particular instance. Just read, I'm talking about the, the, the last uh, two, week, two, three weeks. And it's holding the nine-period uh, moving average. The MACD is not crossed negatively. And the stochastic's at 82.59%. So that's still saying, ah, I've got strength. Now, if you're looking at the cues, this is the daily. Now I'm going to grab the weekly chart. Remember, all of these are notated with a Chapman wave. Uh, maybe I'll get a chance to even go to the white charts a little later on. Now, look at this. You've got a, a, a cup formation from the 68.55 high of October. Uh, I keep saying October. April the 6th. The doji candle at peak in the Chapman wave. You see the MACD, the yellow line, the way it pulled back? Yeah, let me just check on my cell phone. Can you see that? Yes, you can see it really clearly. The yellow line went up, up, up. Went to a peak E doji. When it started coming down, the stochastic started to fail. On balance volume, the green line, can you see that? Yes, you can just see the green line. Turned around, made a V-shaped turn, pulled back. And what happened? The Qs went from 68.55 to 60.04. So 10% correct, uh, about 11.5% correction, pulls back, and now it's run to a new recovery high at 68.88. In the weekly chart, I would have said, oh, oh, be careful. You've got yourself a chance here for a, a double top. This is what we call in the Chapman Wave the drop bucket pattern because it's like a backhoe that picks up, or you'll see this long arm, picks up all the dirt, lifts it up, and then dumps it. Well, it dumps it if the queues go underneath 66. 
If they don't go underneath 66 instead, they continue pushing higher. They go to 69.35, somewhere around there in the next two days. I have to tell you, that's very good action. And the QQQ Trust Series is holding after making a new recovery high. And as I said on uh, when was this? On Wednesday, I just have no choice right now. I, I, I've spent so much time on this in the Chapman Wave notation. I have no choice but to call this leg C up. Leg C means that the Qs are still in a bull mode. That they, no matter how much they pull back, unless they break under 60, oh, I'll tell you right now, unless they break, this will be a peak. I don't even know what peak it would be. Can't be an A. Uh, I mean, it, 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 it's a leg C, it'll be peak C. It can't, G does not go to H, and G does not recycle immediately to A because you have to go back to the previous low. So unless the Qs break under 59 uh, between now and the first week of September, um, it's just holding beautifully. So I, that's the reason why I've called it a bifurcated market in the sense that the split personality, I want to look at longs, I want to look at shorts. I, I don't feel afraid. I just put the stops in. And if they work, they work. If they don't, they don't. So let's just run uh, the numbers, if I've got them in front of me here before we go to break. The Dow's up mm, 72 at 13,129. The comp index is up 14 at 3,068. The S&P's up 3 at 1405. You've got gold uh, up at 80 cents, 1673. Now, I did miss the extension in move, uh, moving gold. I thought that gold would just bounce, but it wouldn't go this high. It has gone this high. So um, I've got to respect that. It's leg D up in most of the, the, the GLD and the SLV, the silver contract. Um, so that's good. And you've got silver up 6, 18 cents at 30.73. High-grade coppers at 30.49. Uh, it's about unch. And you've got bonds now up only five pennies. And we will look at that very shortly. We've got a caller on the line. Who have we got? We've got Joe in Boston. Hi, Joe. How are you? Good, Basil. How are you? Okay, just before we go to the break, you want to just give me the stock that you're looking at? Yes, yeah, COF, please. COF. Now, I hope I'm going to be able to hear the music coming up because I'm doing it a little differently than usual. So this is COF is Capital One Financial. The monthly chart is uh, uh, it was the same sort of thing. I've got this monthly chart actually in leg D, a brand-new leg D. I, I, I don't really have a choice. That's the way I have to count it right now. And, and at the same time, it's at 56.67. And um, the weekly charts made the same kind of double top. We were looking at the, at the Qs, went to a higher high, and it's hanging around at the top. And the weekly, I mean, the daily is at 56.69. And, um, yep, we're coming up to the break. I'm going to say, hold on, let me take a moment here. Okay. And I'll be right back. I'm, I'm, I'm doing a little stalling because I didn't want to talk through the break, which I did the other day. Naughty, naughty. I'll be right back. You're looking at what position? How uh, long? Okay, great. It's looking quite good right now. I'll be back with Joe in Boston. We're looking at COF, uh, Capital One. Be right back. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. 
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, Kay Stalter, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. Millionaires are made every day. The fact is, living your dreams is possible. Someone, somewhere is going to get rich. My recommendation is, let that be you. Each day, someone is making the decision to better themselves and creating a plan to fulfill their financial dreams. Let that be you. The key to turning dreams into reality is to take massive action. Let that be you. I'm Steve Rhodes, co-host of the Money Master Show with Tom O'Brien, seen daily at TFNN. And I can help you with your journey to great wealth. I'll show you how to create the ultimate financial edge, a set of tools, insights, and strategies that are part of my daily newsletter service, Mastering Probability. You'll have direct access to me by phone, email, and my private library of trading and investing secrets for 30 days with an unconditional money-back guarantee. I'll take your trading to the next level. Click on my name, Steve Rhodes, on the homepage of TFNN.com and turn your dreams into reality. Mastering Probability, folks. Let that be you. Kate Stalter's exciting newsletter, Low Price Leaders, has just launched, and now is a great time to get a two-week free trial. Every Wednesday afternoon, Kate sends out her weekly newsletter to her subscribers, where she focuses on small-cap stocks with market caps under $2 billion, as well as low-priced equities with share prices ranging from $5 to $12. Kate tracks a variety of stocks with a combination of strong technical support and solid fundamentals. Many of the stocks featured will be recent IPOs. These new Newer issues are often some of the biggest price gainers in the market and provide an excellent opportunity for substantial gains if timed correctly. You can catch Kate Stalter live on Tiger TV with her small cap roundup every Tuesday and Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time and visit TFNN.com right now to get your two-week free trial to her brand new newsletter, Low Priced Leaders, while locking in the low introductory monthly rate of only $37.50 per month, almost a 50% discount. Act now. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Backtech Environmental. For more information, just click the Backtech banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. Basil Chapman, Dow's up 77 at 13,134. S&P's up 6.72 at 1408.8. Now, that to me is a nice sign in the sense that we're looking at a market that held at least to test very important support that I was looking at, and so far it's been successful. Days Young, I want to see this weekend when I'm going through charts, I want to see which stocks like the one we're looking at here with Joe in Boston, looking at COF, which is Capital One Financial. Joe, is this, a, is, this is not a bank. This is, is this a credit card company only? Yeah. Well, yeah, okay. Yeah, kind of more of a credit card company. But I think right. they, bought, they bought ING, so they do some banking. They bought, like, the IMG So they do? Direct. Okay. That's what I wanted to do. I just find out about it. I haven't really kept up with them. I, I, just, I know the chart pretty well, but I, I don't, um, don't know much about anything else. Now, you know, there's a pattern. I'm sure you've looked at it. This is one of those traditional flag patterns. It looks yeah. like, a, like a golf flag. In other words, a wedding, it's a, yeah. Right. So what it is, it's a, it's a, a symmetrical triangle, like a triangle on the side right. with a long, uh, long wick uh, doji. Now, this is a fascinating doji, the one that was made. On the uh, 90th, I was looking at this um, about, a, I think it must have been about 10 days ago, and it was at 58.69 was the high. And I looked at it and I thought, is this wick going to be filled? Because this is a very long wick and upside down looks like, actually it's more like a, uh, what do they call those, um, um, those, those little insects, uh, not... Uh, Dragonfly. Dragonfly, exactly. Looks a lot like an upside-down dragonfly. But what was fascinating 
My, my rule of thumb with this, because it's not a Chapman Wave Roman candle, the body was too small, if the body was thicker, I would have said, wow, if this, if this can go, this, this stock can go even halfway into that wick, and that would have been somewhere around 57.37, 57.40, I would have thought it could have retested the highs, but it was a different kind of a candle, and what it did is it, it went there, and it only went to 57.98, Pull back very sharply, made it a, a lower low than the previous low. That was the low of the um, 23rd of July. And then it ran up all the way to retest and made a leg A, then a peak A, came back. Now it's making higher highs, but sorry, higher lows, but not yet higher highs. So that resistance is going to be key. But the little candle that I'm looking at is the candle of the 21st with a high of 57.42. Now, here's the question. See, if you were going to buy a stock... I would have said to you, <clears throat> if you bought it right here, you would know immediately that if it took out 57.42 and closed above it, then you can immediately look to the left side because this is what these triangles do. They take you to each left side higher high bar until you go all the way to the flag top. Then, very often, they may, that turns out to be a rectangle pattern or a cup pattern. Then they start pulling back. Right. So this is the way. That's the reason why I'm saying if you're looking at it as, a, as an op, are you looking at it as an option play for um, September, or are you looking at this as a potential yeah, no, I'm stock already in it. purchase? I'm already in it. Yeah, I'm already in it from a little lower. Just a little lower. So you're in it as an option play. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. This is very easy then for me. The most important thing is you want to watch that it doesn't cl close below 54, 40, 55, 48 on the downside. Right. If it does, start pressing to see that. Your stop on, on on any position. How you handle the next position on this? Fifty four uh, ninety six. So we've got two levels. We've got fifty. No, that no fifty fifty four seventy nine closes. Uh, right, that's it. Close below fifty four uh, forty eight. Be a little careful yep. because it's very important with that trend line that it holds fifty four seventy nine. That's the low of the fifteenth. Otherwise, you've got exactly the same uh, technique. Now, you've also looked at the stochastic was rising. The MACD yeah. has a chance to cross positive. Right. I like your, I like your trade. Good. I would keep it as a trade. It could because of the weekly and the monthly. Yeah. I don't know if you're going to have the time. Mm -hmm. But if it works, it could turn into a position play. Right. If because it, the it, monthly it says that. It could get, yeah, I could do a measured move up to like 68. Correct. It could, it, well, uh, 68. I don't know yet about a measured move, but what I would say then is that once you see it taking out 58, once it takes out 59 yeah. and holds about 59, then the level that I'd be looking at based on the monthly is is somewhere between 61.70 and 63.10 would be right. the first big level right. of resistance. Okay. But, yeah, so congratulations. Okay. I think you've got a, a, a very good – chance of making good money here yeah. most important thing is just watch that downside and that applies exactly to the last week's candle yeah. because if you start to get into the middle of that candle yeah. that would say you're underneath the nine ema yeah. i think can you know you, what to look for can you um can you, pull, can you pull up rgld in a monthly real quick rgld oh, monthly. Royal Gold? monthly okay i'll do that i've got it right here and you know what the break's coming up and this is also double topic oh Thank you for calling in with this one. I'll be right back with Joe. Right. We've got a break coming up. We're looking at RGLD. It's at 84.33. Be back with Joe from Boston straight after this break. If you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Treve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intraweek trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Treve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now.
Tom O'Brien's daily trading newsletter, Market Insights, has delivered powerful results for subscribers, and now is the perfect time to try it out for two weeks absolutely free. We're so confident in the value Tom provides his subscribers in his daily newsletter that through Labor Day weekend only, when you sign up for a two-week free trial to Market Insights, we'll send you a free copy of Tom's best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, your ultimate trading mastery system, completely free of charge, will even cover the shipping cost. Cancel at any time during your two-week free trial to Market Insights and pay nothing and keep Tom's free book as a gift from us. This offer is only valid for new subscribers. We've only extended this offer once before, and it will only be active for a short period of two weeks. So act now to take advantage of this great offer and be ready to capitalize on a more active, more volatile market once traders return from their August vacations. All the details are on the front page of TFNN.com. Sign up for your free trial to get your free copy of Tom's best-selling book today. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan for Morgan Stanley Smith Barney. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportion of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley Smith Barney believes that a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what asset allocation and a Morgan Stanley Smith Barney financial advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, first vice president and certified financial planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Smith Barney, LLC. Member SIPC. This segment is brought to you by Harmony Gold. For more information, just click the Harmony Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi folks, we're back. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour. This is the Friday edition, Friday, August the 24th, and the Dow's up 80. S&P's up 742 We're on with Joe in Boston. Two good picks. Picked a COP to look at, and so far it's been very nice. And the other one that he's just spoken about is Royal Gold Inc. It's trading at 84.47. It's only up three cents, but this is very important. The previous high of Royal Gold was at um, um, September. 11th at 83.87. So far, and I think that, that let me just double check. The, so far, what we're looking at is, uh, yep, yesterday it went to a new, is this an all-time high? Let me just move the whole chart. Yeah, new all-time high at 85.03. Now, yeah, I said all-time high, but you know what? I'm going to just squash the chart because, yes, all-time high. Wow, that is really something, 84 Point uh, forty seven right now made a high of eighty five point oh three, and the stochastic has broke. Uh, the stochastic is at sixty eight percent, but rallying very nicely, and the and the uh, MACD is still very strong. So now, when we look at the, the chart, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. But when we're looking at the chart, I would like just to draw one. Truth. I used to have uh, it, it's uh, up. So uh, let's see. I uh, got a question. I'm back. Um, now I'm back. Oh, sorry, everyone. I thought I was back. I'm talking right now. Now I'm back. We're looking at G-O-L-D. This is Royal Gold. I'm not sure exactly what happened there. It's at 84.59. It's up 15 cents. 
I'm looking at a very long-term uh, chart, and it's making, I'm calling this leg E in the monthly chart, but it's breaking out from a potential cup formation. The MACD isn't as good as it was before, but it is, it is turned positive, and the stochastic's way below what it was. It was at, uh, up in the 90s, and now it's at the 68%, but the chart is working very well. And so, Joe, you, you're along? Uh, Joe, you there? Yeah, I'm along. Yes. Okay. Long. I, I so just didn't know long. if you had any price. Pre- I, I just knew it was breaking out. I didn't know what leg it was on the monthly. I, I actually looked at this, and then I couldn't believe that it was making such a powerful move to the top, and then it only pulled back to the nine-period moving average. And it really was on my list as a potential. I was looking at it as an option play to see if, Either it was going to be a, a, on the put side or the, or the call side, but when it started to hold the nine-period moving average, mm-hmm. uh, having made such a powerful A from 57 round number low, and then if you notice that, that was the low back in uh, the week of 11th of May, I, I thought it would I thought it would have to make a little cup formation and stop, but it's not. Now, Looks strong, I'm trying to, yeah. I'm trying to put this together because Royal Gold, this is a royalty company, basically, and I'm trying to put this together. I'm saying, okay, what is the picture? What is the picture? You've got the dollar pulling back. You've got the the individual gold stocks have started to move. That's the kind of thing you expect after gold's had a big move. Gold pulls back. Then very often the gold stocks start to move higher. How high is a very big question because it also depends where the gold does some catching up. You know, the whole bunch of things going on. Then I'm saying to myself, wait a minute, if gold is moving, is this Europe that is starting to think, um, is Europe is starting to expect something really bad, that they're, that they're running into the gold uh, trade? So all I can say is that I've got this as a potential leg B, a peak B if it doesn't make a new high today, or a peak F, but the stochastic is really strong in the daily. The weekly looks good. Now the, the uh, I don't want to say you're in a great position, what I will tell you, if there is a sudden move in, say, the dollar to the upside or something like that happens, that whatever it is that drags gold, and I'm going to do this with the GLD right now, if you don't mind, because I did want to look at the GLD. If the GLD, which is also making the same sort of move, so this GLD, I've got is leg D, but the MACD and stochastic are very strong. It says that the GLD, which is the Gold Spider Trust Fund, which is at 161.73, only down 16 cents, if it makes a high-level consolidation and doesn't close below the, the support of 159 to 157 and a half over the next week, but instead actually makes a new recovery high, mm-hmm. that's going to be very positive for this weekly chart. I spoke about the weekly chart in the GLD. I think it might have been Wednesday. Or, well, I know for a while. And I've been saying that there's tremendous resistance and how it takes out the candle of the 4th of May uh, the week of the 4th of May, 162.18, is going to be very important. And here it is, at 162.21. And it's a Friday. So I like what I'm looking at. I still think that the monthly chart tells me that it's going to need a lot of work, but it's doing the job right now. And you're in the, in the stock that is benefiting the most. It's gone to a new high when the GLD hasn't, which, of course, is gold uh, trades at the price of the uh, one-tenth of the price of current price of spot gold. But that's good because if gold actually does some catching up here to your GL, right. GOLD, RGLD, then, RGLD. RGLD yeah. that means that there's a chance that it could break to the, the, that whole area of what, what we were looking at. And then we'd say that um, I, <laughs> the way it's looking right now, <laughs> um, I, I'm even looking at GOLD, which I, men, I mentioned by, uh, by mistake because yeah, it was no, the wrong good. symbol. Even that's running quite nicely, and that pulled back pretty sharply. So I think you're in the right trade. You've got two very nice positions. Are you doing this also with options, or are you doing this with a stock? Yeah, I just, no, all I do is options. I don't even, I, it's not even worth it to buy the stock. Okay, all right. yeah, I agree with you. If, if it, you, You've got a really good eye. You've got a real good feel for these, and I think for the same amount of effort, because you watch it so closely, right. your bang for the buck right. is absolutely exactly. there, and I, I, I congratulate you for that. It's not an easy thing to do. You make it sound easy. It is not, really not, it's not an easy, easy thing to do. not easy at all, believe me. It is not easy. It, and there are very often some very worrying moments that could be saved because you're using options. You've got a time limit. One yeah. of the things, folks, about options is that 
You might be 100% correct. I, I had this happen a number of times right. back when I began doing options, and I'm yeah. thinking, oh, what a fantastic trade. I'm looking at the stock, looking at the stock. Two things happen. One is it doesn't trade with the stock. Yeah. It does its own little thing. That's the, and the other is you are absolutely right. Unfortunately, options expire on um, Friday, and Monday it does exactly what you were waiting for it to do, correct? Yeah, but what I've been doing lately is I've been a net seller of premium uh, so okay. instead of buying. So I'm on the other side of it. So I'm just working the decay. Okay, um, so basically what we're looking at, when you're looking at options, and you're, we've got a fabulous options show uh, yeah, Tuesday. They do a great uh, job, this, yeah. It's really good. So basically what Joe's doing is he's expecting that there's a particular range in the price of the stock. And what he does, he goes out a little further in the option, and instead of going to the direction that the stock is trading in, he sells it thinking he's going to be buying it back at a lower premium. And one of the reasons, and it's the same thing at the bottom, one of the reasons is that as there's a time decay, right. there, is a, there is a price decay. And that price decay can be exponential the closer you get to options expiration. But what also happens at options expiration, if you are in the wrong position and there's a sudden bout of optimism in the stock, you can start moving point for point against you. Right. So it, it is, it's, I was you got to know what you're doing. Parent, you have to know what you're doing. Parenthood, right? <laughs> yeah. You have to know what you're doing. And I, you're going to watch know. this baby. Yep. Yeah. You, but basically, it just, it's defined risk. So, you know, they talk about it on the option show about, you know, using spreads. So it's all spreads. It's not unlimited risk. So you just got to, you got to put the spreads on. But what you try to do is, Set it up that you have a 66% chance of, of, of making money. So you, you, you either sell the spread, the put spread, or sell the call spread above or below where, the, where it's trading so that it has to move to actually get in the money. Correct. So thank That's, you very much for yeah. that explanation, Joe. I appreciate it, and All congratulations. Right, it's a nice position there. All right, bye. Thank you very much for calling. So let's just go to this. I had a question earlier on. I'm going to try to find it. It was a really good question. Three drives to the top, and if I can just get it right here. Um, the question was, uh, is, and it was a stock that I periodically look at, am I going to find it? Three drives to the top. Oh, I don't believe I've got it. So I'm in trouble. I said I find it, and I'm, I'm looking for it here. Ah, oh, there, HMSY. Uh, Joe in the den wanted to know, another Joe, Joe D in the den, wanted to know, and this is an HMSY. HMSY, folks, is, I know the symbol so well, what is the stock? Uh, HMS Holdings, and uh, for the life of me, I can't remember what they do. Not important. We're looking at a stock right now that is trading at 34.06. It's down $1.20. The monthly chart is making an expanding wedge. Remember I talked about expanding wedges to the downside? There's a particular technique I use. If you're using an expanding wedge to the upside, there are a number of uses, and there's a technique that uh, Bud Rolfs used to talk about, which is an expanding ice cream going moving higher. I use it a little differently, and what I do is I like to see from the previous high, um, and that was 34 90 back in uh, March, I believe, um, February, March of 2012 this year, pulls back and then runs to a new recovery high. I think it's all-time high at 37.19 this month. But the stochastic and MACD are not nearly as powerful. So that's one thing that I'm looking at because it's a wide-ranging doji candle. And I'll talk about that in a moment because that wick is what – even if it pulls back or goes higher, it's going to probably test 34 at some point before it makes a bigger move, and that bigger move I'll discuss in a moment because it made a doji candle last week at leg D, so this week so far is a peak D because it hasn't gone above 35.54. So HMSY, I'm looking at, and I'm saying, hmm, MACD and Stochastic are very good. Candle pulled back under the line EMA, but right now it's above it. That's a 33.33. So... I'm looking at that, and I'm saying, now let's look at the daily. Daily made a peak C1, C2, a potential double top, pullback sharply. I'm going to make it real clear. I don't do the three drives to a top. I know what you're looking at. It's just it's not part of my vernacular. I'm not, I look at it, but I'm not used to it as a technique for myself. So what I'm going to say is I would do this. I don't know whether you want to go short or long. All I can say is that if it takes out today's candle at any point in the next three days, 31.91, Look for 30.03 as the next target. If it breaks that, it will go all the way down to the candle of the 28th of June. 
And on the upside, if it manages by Tuesday, by Wednesday morning, Wednesday, actually all day, on Wednesday, if it's able to get about $36, it's a trading at 33.93, it could make that leg D, and then I'd be looking at it as a potential short. Got Ari and Arcadia on the line. Hi, Ari, how are you? Pretty good, Basil. Good. I had to talk to you about SLW today. Oh, okay, so yes, so are you still in the position in SLW? Yes, because I told you I'm trading it on the weekly. Okay, now the question is, uh, on the daily, if do you know what peak it is that you've just gotten? Uh, I believe a G. I mean, I've got it as I've got it as leg. It's either C or G. Yes, but and, I, I, and one I, of the reasons why I want to keep it as a parallel wave count. My preference right now is just to be very, uh, very methodical and call it just alphabetically as a new buy mode going to, because it was an instant restart, calling it peak C, probably going to go to D above yesterday's high. Now, the question about the weekly is, is it going to break to the upside into the 35, 50, 36 area to make the monthly chart? Remember, we were talking about the, the down channel in the monthly, and that resistance in the month of August, that's all of next, that's next week, will go to, yep, if, if it goes to 36.60, it's broken the downtrend on a closing basis. I'd like to see the following month, but we can only do one month at a time, but the stochastic has turned around in the monthly chart, and the MACD in the, in the monthly is flattening to moving higher, and that's a positive, but it's the action in the Weekly. Now, I don't know how to do this on, on the phone, but if you're able to watch Tiger TV, I'm going to pull this out, stretch it out so that you can look at the weekly chart of SLW, which is Silver Wheaton, folks, trading at 34.11. I'm stretching it out, and I'll explain why. Look at the bumper car swoops that have occurred between the stochastic and the MACD. They've gone up together, then they've gone down together, then they've gone up together, and then down together, and now they're going up together with a pattern that I call the squash. Now I've got to look back, and that's where the stochastic has moved up very sharply with the price, and the stochastic is giving a confirmation. That has a tendency to take you to at least a peak C. Well, we're in leg C right now. So I'm going to answer your question because it's a, it's, a, it's a really pertinent question. You've done really well with Silver Wheaton. The idea is to ask the question, can it get to D? Well, look what has happened with Silver Wheaton. When it made a low in the weekly chart back in the week of the 17th of June, it went to 29.39. Where did it go? Peak ABC. And the week of the 23rd of September, it went to 42.50 and then plummeted. It made another low and it went to ABC, and I call that ABC minus because it pulled back and plummeted. Then it went to peak A and B, and I call it B minus. Now, I could have called that a continuation, and that really was the uh, peak D. 37, 38, 37, 25. So that really the B minus it could have been D. Uh, I, I'm trying to keep it yeah, as the flow. The chart tells me what it wants to do. And this chart was saying all the time since it made the peak F top back in April, I think it was, um, April, the week of the 8th at 4760, it failed every buy mode and has gone to a slightly lower low. Well, that B minus went to a lower low, and now it's gone to C. Your question has to be, does it follow the swoops and it comes back down? Is this going to turn into a C minus? Or is this the time that it's going to break and start a move that goes all the way to September? Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil's subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to check out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page of TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program, The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern on TFNN. Uh -huh.
In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a a better trader each week in his newsletter the gold report with over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week in addition to covering the xau hui gld and dollar the gold report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market for your 30-day free trial to tom o'brien's gold report log on to tfnn.com today don't miss out on this great offer act now David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Time is the great equalizer of all mankind. Time doesn't care about winners or losers, who succeeds or fails. Time only cares that you played the game. Question, are you playing the money game? Is your money working as hard for you as you are for it? I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, a daily trading and investment newsletter service, and we're celebrating our one-year anniversary. In year one, we generated a 30% profit. Plus, I provided 26 hours of live coaching to my clients. My daily newsletter service is available by 8 a.m. each day and covers the stock, futures, currency, and commodity markets, along with all the current patterns that you can trade. Each newsletter is packed with education, and it's yours for as little as $3 per day. And for the next 30 days, you can try it risk-free. Click on my name, Steve Rhodes, on the homepage of TFNN.com and begin your journey to great wealth today. If you're waiting for a better tomorrow, remember this. Today's tomorrow will soon be yesterday, and your clock is ticking. Mastering Probability. Now is your time. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Hi, folks. Basil Chapman. Yeah, before I forget, I... I I want to just mention that Nico Dehan comes on off to me. Uh, it's just uh, great. Uh, he has a newsletter here at TFN, just about health, about your body, about you know, your thinking. It's just it's a great, great show. Well, he's got a guest today, Paige Clark. Paige is a, a teacher of natural medicine, and Paige owns Essentia Holistics in Bel Air Bluffs, Florida. So John and Nico, John, John, um, uh, sorry, Nico and Paige will be on right after my show at noon Eastern time, and. Call in, 877-927-6648 with your questions on health and nutrition. Right now, I'm on with Ari in Arcadia, and we're looking at SLW. Now, Ari, just one little thing. I, I can't change yet my position on SLV. That's the iShare Silver Trust. They, they've bounced off the 200-period moving average, and they're doing very well. I just want you to look at, in your own work, the swoops that have been made in the MACD and the slow stochastic that have paralleled the move. So all I'm going to say to you is I think you've still got a great a great trade. Uh, a, a great position has turned into not a trade but a position play. But I would actually say to you, don't worry about the upside. Let the upside take care of itself. I would look at 3270 to 30, 3220. If it closes underneath that, then it's either going to go sideways or it's going to start a pullback and a deeper pullback. But rather stay with the upside. That's the way I'm looking at it. The other thing is, if it does break above, uh, if it does break above 34.79, um, as I said before, start thinking a little money management. That's where you might want to take something off because that is leg deep. If the MACD and stochastic are holding really well, 
you might just want to say, I'm only going to watch the downside. If it breaks on the downside, I need to be careful. But on the upside, one part of my position, I can have a trading stop. So I hope that helps you. Yes, can I say something about the bond? Yes. Now, I've been trading bonds since 1980, 1980, 1984, 83. Okay. I used to go with non competitive bidder. But we used to trade $25 billion a month then. And they say that from today to the end of the year, the Treasury is going to raise something under a trillion dollars. Huh. So people are wondering what's happening with gold. And right. Gold's ahead. It's ahead. It's always ahead. And gold is probably saying, where are they going to come up? I know where they're going to come up with the trillion dollars. There's no question they're going to come up with that. Right, somewhere, somehow, right? Oh, no, the, the, the Fed is going to take care of it. That's no problem. Right. But the thing is, if the Fed's going to create credit to give to the treasuries and that creation of credit. You're right. <laughs> that means uh, that, gold is going to so, so, yeah, so this is, so the, the money is going into gold, not just as a hedge, but as a play on the expectancy that there's going to be a problem. No, there'll be no problem. It's just the fact will be that under a trillion dollars worth of credit is going to have to be created. There's no problem with that. Oh, yeah, yeah that they, can, they can manage that, right. Push a button on the computer, and it's taken care of. One little button. One button, right. So, all right, well, this is going to be interesting to watch, so I'm going to have to do a little work over the weekend on this on this gold position. We'll see, because uh, the gold um, is acting, the gold stocks, some of them are acting very, very well. Some have pulled back, They've had a good, so I'm going to be watching. So thank you for that, and let's we'll continue this again next week. Thank you, Ari. Thanks for calling. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So, folks, I had a question in the den, two things. One is the TLT, just as we're about to break, we've got a couple of seconds here. Don't forget Nico's show coming up. The TLT is trading at 125.02. This is a strong leg A, but the weekly chart is still saying rectangle formation, trading range, but I I'd mentioned uh, earlier, I think on Wednesday, that I mentioned that I believe that the bulk of the move down might have been made. And now it might be time more than price. It, will be, it could be price if it breaks under 120 to go to 190. So I'm going to be talking about this more next week. In the meantime, as I said, buy for a market. Don't be afraid. Go long what you like. Go short what you like. Put your stops. Put your buy stops in. Funnily enough, that can still work in this market. We're having some success with that in my opening call. That's my service, my daily service. Check it out. TFNN, two weeks free. And Are it's you a looking great for precision?